All right, so uh, variables have some really important characteristics. And one of the most important is called their scale of measure. And there's only four scales of measure. And uh, an easy way to remember it uh, is the acronym noir, right? So this is French for uh, black, right? So it's also like a film genre. Noir film is like um, like that kind of like a like Blade Runner. It's kind of dark and creepy and stuff like that, right? So every variable is going to be one of these kinds, right? So it's going to be nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio, right? Um, and so these are well. So nominal variables. These are also known as Categorical, right? And so here, values are categories. For example, uh, for the variable of biological sex, you could be male or female, right? So those are the values for the variable of sex. For this is nominal. So you're one or the other, and there's one's not bigger. Or, or more or less or anything like that. They're just different, right? Um, ordinal, um, these are ranks. Um, so for example, um, when there's a race, all right, so like you say the race outcome, in the sense of first place, second place, third place, et cetera. So each person, um, has their own unique uh, rank with ordinal variables. Um, and notice you can't tell how much better the first person did than the second, or the second did than the third. It could have been the case that the first and second were just super close in this race, and the second person almost got first place, right? They could have been very close, uh, but those two could have been super far apart, super ahead of uh, the third person. And so in that case, this could have been like one second difference, but this could have been one minute, right? And with with these uh, ordinal variables, you lose the degree of difference uh, between individuals with the different values. Um, and then the last two scales of measure are interval and ratio. Um, so we'll talk for a second about interval. For here, there are equal intervals between values, right? OK, so uh, for example, with the um, interval scale of measure, a variable that has that uh, would be Fahrenheit, if I can spell it, height, Fahrenheit temperature, right? So uh, here, the equal interval would mean that uh, to go from negative 32 degrees to 31 degrees, that one degree change is the same amount as going from five degrees to six degrees, right? So those, that, that one change in the values is the same regardless of where you are on the scale, right? which is unlike what rank order was, where you don't know how close these two are compared to how close these two are. Uh, ratio is also going to have equal intervals. All right, so um, an example of this on the t for temperature uh, is the Kelvin scale. All right, so for Kelvin, uh, it's exactly the same thing where um, if you have 32 degrees and you go to 33, that one degree difference is the same as going from 100 to 101. Now, that you might wonder what the difference between Kelvin and Fahrenheit is. It makes one interval and the other one ratio. And the difference is, is Kelvin can't go below zero. Zero, Kelvin equals zero is the, is the minimum. Is the minimum. There's no such thing as a, a negative 10 value for Kelvin. Uh, for interval, though, um, there's negative numbers, and the numbers are kind of arbitrarily assigned. All right, so Kelvin and scientists figured out is the temperature scale where when you get down to zero, there's literally no heat in that spot. So it's colder than a freezer. It's like colder than outer space even. Right? It's almost a theoretical thing, but there's no heat energy in a place with zero Kelvin. Um, and so other examples of ratio would be like height, because you can't have a negative height. Um, age, you can't have a negative age. 
right? So interval values are actually a little bit less common in the real world than ratios. Any kind of count would be ratio, like 15 uh, deer in the park, that's ratio because you can't have negative five deer. Um, so for ratio, it's the same as interval except for negative numbers are impossible. Impossible. I think there's an extra S in there. Impossible. Um, so ratio is named ratio for a good reason because since there's a zero, uh, the numbers are actually more meaningful. So if you have um, something that is um, two degrees Kelvin and something else that's four degrees Kelvin, uh, the thing that's 4 degrees Kelvin literally has twice as much heat energy as the one of 2 degrees Kelvin, right? And if you had something else that had 8 degrees Kelvin, right, that's twice as hot as the thing that's 4 degrees Kelvin and four times as hot as the thing that's 2 degrees Kelvin. That's why it's called ratio, right? For interval, it's not the case that if you have something that's 2 degrees Fahrenheit and something else that's 4 degrees Fahrenheit, the thing that's 4 degrees Fahrenheit is not twice as hot as the thing that's 2 degrees Fahrenheit uh, because those kind of ratios don't make sense uh, with interval, right? So, I mean, how would you even have a, a negative two degrees Fahrenheit um, compared to a two degrees Fahrenheit? It's not even like a double, um, it's just kind of nonsensical, right? So these ratio numbers are the ones that are most intuitive and familiar to people. Um, and in practice, we really only care about whether or not something is interval or ratio uh, for our inferential statistics. We treat these the same. Um, and a class like this, an introductory stats class, focuses primarily on on these kinds of outcome variables, these kinds of measured variables. Okay. Oh. Uh, so scale of measure uh, is a critical feature throughout the whole class because um, for every analysis you do, you have to determine the scale of measure of your outcome variable that you're looking at. And almost always for a class like this, it'll be interval or ratio. And um, you can also often have like a grouping variable or another variable that you'll use to explain your outcome variable. You'll, you'll be trying to explain women's height, um, and so uh, maybe what you'll do is have them um, be a, in different groups. They could be SEU students or students at another, another school like Dixie State University. Uh, or you can see if women's heights are related to their uh, rank order in a race. Right, or you could see if their women's heights um, are related to their, their temperature in Fahrenheit. Right? Or you could see if women's heights are uh, related to um, their age, right? which would certainly be the case uh, until they're at least like 13 years old. Uh, okay, and then another feature about, another feature about these variables is um, is as you go up on this on the these different scales of measure you there's, there's there's less information up here in a variable than there is here so this has got more information this has got less uh, less information All right for example um, if you have three participants and you count the number of cookies that they have right if one person has one cookie uh, somebody else has uh, five cookies and the other person has six cookies, right? So this person has five times as many cookies as that one. That's a ratio scale. You could transform these, these numbers into an interval scale if you wanted to. Um, for example, one easy way to do it would be just, just to subtract the mean of these, right? So uh, one plus uh, five is six, six plus six is 12, 12 divided by three is four. Um, right, so if we just subtract four from each of these, you get negative three, one, and two. Right, so with, the, with this new bizarre interval scale of the number of cookies that we have, um, notice this is still a difference of four, just like it was before, four different cookies. Uh, and this is a difference of one, right? So we've held on to our equal interval aspect of it, uh, but no longer is this person five times as many. You can't take a ratio of negative three and one and make anything meaningful out of it. Um, right, so we've gone from ratio data uh, to interval data. 
right? We can actually further change this. We can transform it again into ordinal, where we could say well, the person with the most cookies gets number one, first place. The person with the second number of cookies gets number two, and the person with the least number of cookies gets number three. Right now, we know this person had more cookies than everybody else, but we don't know uh, how number one and two compared, or how number one and two compared compared to number two and three. Right? We just got the, the, the cookie winner, uh, cookie silver place, and then the bronze. Um, and then we could go even further and transform this into a nominal scale. Right? So let's say that we are having a cookie contest, and we only want from each different group uh, the, the person with the most cookies. Right? So in that case, it would be the case that this person was in because they had the most cookies, and these folks would be out. They would be out uh, of our grouping, right? So now we don't even know, like between these two, which one had more or less. We just know who turned out to be in and who turned to be out. So this has even less information um, than the one below it. So you can transform a variable all the way up, and each time you do, you lose information. And if you start off with this kind of a measure, you can't go down and create more. So if you're creating a new a variable measure in a study, if you can start off with ratio, that's the wisest thing to do uh, because you can always change it into a less informative kind of scale of measure later on if you want to. Like a grouping variable up here, you can do that later on. Okay, scales of measure. Whew. They're so important.